So we're, we're to the time of year again uh, for the Valentine's steak dinner. Uh, we are going to make a, diff a change this year. Uh, we're going to have two different tickets. We're going to have a Valentine's steak dinner, and we're going to have a Valentine's chicken dinner. Uh, we had several people wanting chicken uh, instead of steak, so we are going to have that available this year. Uh, this will be on the uh, 13th. Microphone's going. Uh, it's going to be on the 13th. Can everybody hear me? Uh, and um, it's going to be from 4.30 until 8 o'clock. Uh, it's going to be set up like a restaurant, so you'll come and, and be served. If you've ever been to this before, it's a great event, and the youth uh, are, do really well. Uh, we will also have child care available for anyone who wants child care uh, for that evening, uh, so you can have a private meal. And thank you very much. And the tickets will be for sale the next three weeks in the bell tower. All right. Thank you, Mitchell. We are so blessed of all that Mitchell does for, our, for us here with our youth and what Miss Eby does with our children. Uh, let's thank both of them this morning for their hard work. We also want to thank Helen Shore for covering the desk for us uh, in the transition period. There was an email that was sent out to the church uh, about the new ministry coordinator slash admin for the church, and that is Donna Johnson, which we are delighted to, uh, that Donna will be coming on board on January 19th and look forward to having her on staff. We want to thank staff parish, Cindy uh, Schroeder especially, for all their hard work that they do all year long. It is great to be together. It is great to be together as we worship our Savior together. It is also great to see Linda Hicks here today. She was here last Sunday. But Linda... <laughs> Linda has, uh, due to health reasons, has been missing church since last August, and it is so good to see you sitting there uh, in worship today, Linda. Now let us stand and share the peace of Christ with one another.
of God resounds upon the water. The spirit of the Lord hovers over the stream. The son of God is named beloved and all who worship shout out glory. Let us now stand and worship together as we sing our opening hymn. In Christ there is no east or west found on page 548 in the hymnal. We'll sing it to the familiar tune. as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. turn in our hymnals to page 761 as we read responsively the Psalter, Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The glory of the God of glory thunders. The Lord upon many waters. The 
The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars The Lord makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and Syrian like a wild young ox. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The voice of the Lord makes the oaks to world and strips the forest bare. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as ruler forever. May God add God's blessing to the reading of God's word. We now invite the children to come forward with Miss Eby as it is time mostly for children. morning guys do you guys mind scooting up one more seat I want to make sure they can see your pretty faces awesome all right I have a question and some of you know the answer to this does anybody know what this is called baptism Baptism, yes what's what's this piece this beautiful piece of furniture called the baptismal no okay I'm gonna teach you it is the baptismal font Can you say that? Font. Yes. And we played a little game at the earlier service, but what is inside of this? Water. So what what is water doing in a baptismal font? What do we use water for in a baptismal font? Yes, for ba- baptism. Yes, for baptism. Yes, yeah, beautiful. So it's really cool. That's right. You did awesome. You did awesome. So this is called a baptismal font. And when someone is baptized, what age do you have to be? Do you know? It's a trick question. You don't have to be any age. You can be any age you want. Any any time, God can baptize you. It's awesome. And so. Pastor Linda or Pastor Josh, whoever the pastor is, will stick their hand in. And sometimes I think they put a mark or they put some water on the forehead and they, they're baptized, you're baptized in God's name. Now, what's cool is there's a story in the Bible when who got baptized? Jesus got baptized. And who baptized Jesus? Do you remember his name? John the Baptist, yes. And what's really awesome, awesome, cool stuff, okay? The water that's in here comes from the Jordan River. And where was Jesus baptized? The Jordan River. Isn't that the coolest thing ever? I think it's cool. So when we go to Godly Play, we're going to learn all about the story of Jesus being baptized, okay? Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, thank you for the beautiful gift of baptism. Thank you for inviting us into your family. We love you with everything we have. Amen. As we come to this time of prayer, there are several on our prayer list that we want to lift up. I also want to mention to you Linda Widholm, who is recovering from surgery, Lib Hobson, who is also recovering from surgery, and Miss Dottie Kirkman, who is a hospice. Um, we are praying for them, especially in the family of, Sh- of Sheriff Maynard Reed and Charlie Cherry, um, who passed away. Um, we pray for them as well. Let us now go to God in prayer.
glorious God, as Jesus prayed at his baptism, your spirit brooded over him, providing sustenance and strength. We ask, God, that you would brood over us today by the power of your Holy Spirit as we offer our prayers for the church and the world. Almighty God, we pray for your church. We pray that your word would spark our lives with truth and joy as we serve one another to the glory of your name. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all leaders and people around the globe asking that your justice would provoke us to shape a peaceful world where all work for the common good. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the well-being of your creation. May your goodness startle us to the horror of our exploitation and abuse. God, we pray for all who suffer grief or sickness of any kind. We pray and ask that your tender presence would abide with us and hasten our healing. We pray for the doctors and nurses who care for our loved ones. We pray that your hand would guide them. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, we pray for those who lack the essentials of life asking that your righteousness raise us up to walk together with respect and dignity for all. We pray for those who have died, asking that your steadfast love shelter them in the peace of your eternal light. Lord, in your mercy. O God, you have made us, you have formed us and called us by name, and you have redeemed us in Christ. We receive our prayers this day, for your life-giving spirit is powerful to save. We pray these things in the, one who, in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As people who have passed through the waters of baptism, let us make our grateful offering to God, our Redeemer. As the ushers come forward, we receive this morning's God's tithe and our offering. <laughs>
these your tithes and our offerings. We ask God that you would help us to use them to further your kingdom, which will be about bringing your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> gospel today comes from the gospel of Luke chapter 3 verses 15 through 17 and verses 21 through 22. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Saint Luke. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat from his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus had also been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. 
And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. You may be seated. A friend of mine, uh, just a couple years ago, a year or so ago, uh, got married. He was 48 years old and had waited to get married until he was a little bit older, and he fell in love, absolutely in love. And he finally got married at the age of 48, and now he has his wife's name tattooed across his chest. We'll be at the pool, and uh, there's Julie sitting in a chair, and Julie across his chest. (laughs) I know a man who served our country faithfully in Vietnam three tours of duty, and he had the marine symbol tattooed on his arm, the name of his wife, and then a cross with Jesus' name tattooed on his upper arm. Uh, the three things that he loved so much his, and gave his life for, his country, his family, and his Savior. I also know a church that would not allow him to take leadership in the church because of their misinterpretation of Scripture and judged him for his tattoos. I officiated at his funeral a few years ago. He retired as a sergeant major in the United States Marine Corps and served our country very well. A man of great dignity and honor and great respect, respected by many. But this church, because of their misinterpretation of Scripture, judged him for his tattoos. His heart could not have been more right. His heart could not have been more right. He left that church years ago and then came over to the Methodist church where he served as the church treasurer for about 15 or so years after that. There's a person among us here this morning that has experienced church hurt, what we call church hurt in another church, because he was a deacon in that church, and one summer he forgot to wear his long sleeves, and they saw the tattoo on his arm, and so then he was asked to leave the church. And then because of that church hurt, he was out of church for many years. And we are so glad that, Roger, that you are here among us and that we don't care about your tattoo. We just care about your heart. And we thank God that God brought you here to First Methodist and give praise for God's life, for your life. There are those that live under the literal interpretation of Leviticus 19.28 that tattoos that it says in there that the tattoos that they are referring to is referring to a uh, probably when members of a pagan cult were forced to have a tattoo when someone died. So therefore, the law said no tattoos. So again, it is important that we understand and interpret Scripture in the context in which it was written. If we're going to literalize things and not read the Old Testament through the lens of the New Testament, then we must literalize everything. Literalists often pick and choose what they want to literalize. If you want to exclude people for having a tattoo, then you better not eat that plate of fried shrimp that you so much enjoy. I enjoy fried shrimp myself. (laughs) Young people, before I go much further and get in a lot of trouble with your parents or grandparents, I want you to understand that this today is no way permission or a weapon in your arsenal about getting that tattoo of your boyfriend or girlfriend's initials plus your initials on your arm. Instead, put that on a tree, okay? It's no, this is not permission for you to have the infinity uh, symbol on your knuckles that you have so long desired for. 
Don't do any permanent markings like tattoos or piercings or body modifications until you are at least 40 years old. (laughs) Then you will have the sense of knowing whether it's a good idea or not. Until then, just don't. (laughs) This is about seeing a person as God sees them. Seeing a person from the inside, not what's on the outside. I enjoy looking at other tattoos. Uh, I know a young man who's got several tattoos and that he was converted to Christianity around the age of 23 or so. And he's very dedicated to his faith. You can find him on Saturday afternoons working with troubled teenagers because he was a troubled teenager. You can find him on Saturdays, though, working with troubled youth, giving them hope in the world. And he has a great artistic gift. And so he opened a tattoo shop called Divine Art. And he only does Christian symbols or tattoos that have a special meaning for a person. I thought about a long time ago about getting a tattoo, and my children suggested that I get a turtle when they were little. I decided that was not a good idea. Then they wanted me to get their initials on a butterfly, and I said, no, I don't think that's a good idea either. I thought about getting the cross and flame at one time, um, because I am dedicated. Uh, Foremost, I commit my life to Jesus Christ. That everything about me, I hope, reflects the love of Jesus Christ. And being ordained in the United Methodist Church where God has called me to serve, I thought, well, a cross and flame might be good. But then I have this little thing called a fear of needles, so I did away with all that. But I thought about what kind of tattoo I would get if I got a tattoo. I wrote about that in my blog as well. Uh, And I probably would get a starfish. Sometimes, like you, I feel overwhelmed with the world. I feel overwhelmed and I wonder how we as Christians can make a difference in this war-torn, prejudiced, sometimes hate-filled, cruel, self-centered world. I get overwhelmed. Do you sometimes get overwhelmed? How we as Christians can make a difference. I still believe that we do and that we can. By the power of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can still make a difference in this world. So I thought about what tattoo I would get, and I would get a starfish. Because it's about the story of the young boy on the beach. You may know this story, but it goes like this. A young boy was walking the beach one morning, and he came across thousands of starfish that had washed up on the beach the night before. He bent over, and he picked one up, and he tossed it back into the sea. And he did this repeatedly, just picking them up one at a time and flinging them back into the ocean. And there was an old man sitting on the beach watching the little boy do this. And as the little boy got closer, the old man said, what are you doing? And the boy replied, I'm throwing starfish back into the sea. Otherwise, they will die in the hot sun today. The old man said, huh, I'm afraid that you're not going to make much of a difference. There's tens of thousands of starfish out here. To which the little boy bent over picked up another starfish, flung it into the ocean, looked up at the old man, smiled, and said, it made a difference to that one. I try to live my life to that principle. Maybe one person at a time. Maybe one person at a time needs to understand God's love and God's grace. We all have the opportunity to create positive change. We all have the opportunity to change a life, to to make a difference every single day. Ordinary people like me and you, ordinary Christians like me and you, make a difference in this world. So if I ever get a tattoo, which I probably won't, but if I do, it'll be a starfish. So I might get one, I might not. Because for me, 
I really don't need to be marked because you see, I already am. I'm already marked by God. I was marked at my baptism when my parents held me, walked the aisle and held me in their arms and the pastor baptized me in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. And as I laid there in my father's arms and my mother beside him, I was marked. And I was a cute little baby. I was marked that day. I was marked by God. There's no visible tattoo on my head anywhere. But I was marked that day. Yes, as Methodists, we baptized babies. Just last week, Katie and Joe and their families stood here at the altar and offered Remy for baptism. And the, we as a church made our vows to Remy and the children here. We don't wait for a child to become 13 or 14 to be baptized because you see God is already present in that child's life. God's prevenient grace is already here for that child. God's prevenient grace is already here for each of us. And there's nothing that the child or us as parents or grandparents can do to earn God's grace. God is already at work. So yes, we baptize babies. There are other reasons. Baptizing, baptism involves a dying to sin, a newness of life, union with Christ, power of the Holy Spirit to work within us, incorporation into Christ's holy church, being marked and set apart for God's kingdom to do God's work. The water of baptism symbolizes the cleansing of sin and the purification of our souls. It calls us to a holiness of life. It calls us to something much greater, something much better than we are. The mark of baptism says that we are loved, that we are loved just as we are, no matter who we are or where we've been or what we have done, that we are forgiven and God's people puts their hand upon us to love us, to nurture us, to help us to walk in the ways of life. What matters is that we're marked by God. Today, at the end of the service on our final hymn, you will have the opportunity to come forward to the baptismal font to reaffirm your baptism if you've already been baptized. That Josh and I will mark your forehead and we'll say, remember your baptism and be thankful. So come today and experience the power of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you don't remember your baptism. Maybe you were a ch an infant. But come today and re-experience that grace. Maybe you've not been baptized. And that's okay. Come anyway. Come and just say, I've not been baptized. And we will mark you with water and pray a blessing on you. And then we'll talk, hopefully later, about being baptized. Remember your baptism is such a powerful experience because you see what God has done in us. What God has done once, God has done well. We are marked by God. It means that we're committed to something and someone greater than us. Being marked by God means that God is God and we are not. Being marked by God means that God loves us just as we are. Being marked by God sets us apart from the world so that we can go into the world full of His love and full of His grace. Come today. Come and be marked. Marked by love. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to ask that you turn to your hymnal to page 41. Turn your hymnal to page 41 and join me in the great in the thanksgiving over the water. Okay. The Lord be with you. 
and also with you. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and you brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord of all the earth, tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his words to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O God, to bless this gift of water and all of us who receive it this day, to wash away our sin to clothe us in righteousness, that throughout our lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, we may share in your final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. I'm going to invite the choir to come forward first. The altar is open. You may, after you receive your reaffirmation or your blessing, then you may come and kneel at the altar. to page 593 as we sing together Here I Am Lord and come as you are led.
you go in the love of God, the peace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. May you go out into this world marked by love, marked by grace, and may you show that love to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um.